Hello there. Nice to talk to you, Bill. From New Zealand, and I'm uh, and I'm coming out the other end in Victoria. Yes. Well, where, where are we calling you in Auckland? Yes, I'm in Auckland. It's um, as you say, it's about uh, quarter to nine here. We've just had a lovely, lovely day today. About 22 degrees. What's the weather like in Melbourne? Well, a little overcast, which I guess is expected this time of the year. What takes you to New Zealand, though, Bill? I'm doing a doing a long television uh, serial here. The Further Adventures of Black Beauty, which I think uh, our, our viewers and listeners in Australia will will remember, it was it was a BBC um, uh, serial many years ago, and it's now being done again, but it's being done down under in uh, in New Zealand. How wonderful! The Private War of Lucinda Smith. You are one of the stars in an all star cast, but. More importantly, you were one of the inspirations behind the whole story, Bill. What, what, what is the story there? Well, as a matter of fact, it's, a, it's a, my mother uh, is a Melbourne girl, and she was, um, uh, she was an actress and went to England in 1910, and it was her story that virtually is what we're going to see on the screen, but it's been, it's been quite... Uh, it's been changed somewhat, but the general premise was... Uh, that is my mother's story. She went to New Guinea with a, with a, and um, uh, she had a lot of adventures there, which you will, you will see on the um, on the forthcoming television uh, program. How wonderful! So, had it been an idea in your head for some time? Well, as a matter of fact, I I grew up with the story naturally of my mother's mother's life, and uh, uh, an actor friend of mine, the late great departed Peter Finch, bless his soul, said to me years and years ago, he said, why don't you uh, write that story of your mother's or get her to write it? It should be a film. So, lo and behold, about 20 years ago in London, dear old Peter Yeldon, who's a very dear chum of mine, uh, suggested that we, uh, that we do something about the story. I sold it to him, and I didn't hear another word about it until about last year, Pete rang me up and he said, look, we're going to do your mother's story and there's a nice part in it for you and we're filming it in, in uh, Samoa, Western Samoa. We couldn't film it in New Guinea for, for political reasons, I think, or whatever the reason was, we couldn't shoot it there, so we shot New Guinea in Samoa and it's turned out very well indeed, I believe. How wonderful. We're talking to Bill Kerr. Bill is in New Zealand at the moment. He's one of the stars of The Private War of Lucinda Smith which premieres tomorrow night on Channel 9. The time is 12 minutes before 7 o'clock here on 1503 3AK. Bill, what are the memories of your mum? Because I would have thought that to go to England to work as an actress back at the uh, almost the turn of the century would have been quite a bold move to make. Oh, it, it was, but she was, uh, she was quite, a, quite a lady, and, and I identified her very, very closely with with the the wonderful with Linda Cropper who played who played my mother in the film um i'm sure my mother would uh, would be delighted to know that she's being being played by by such a lovely lovely actress and a and a smashing girl but my mother was a was an was a uh, a liberated woman of 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 her period she was a bohemian as they used to say in those days uh she liked an odd glass of whiskey and smoked a cigarette or two and uh, and of course, the theatre was considered quite, uh, quite, quite uh, well, 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 not not the thing that a, that a well well bred young lady would would do. Travel all the way from Australia and go to England and try her luck. But on the boat, she met a gentleman by the name of Fred Rattle, and they had a shipboard romance. And uh, he followed her all around England, proposed to her. They went to South America as a, as husband and wife but they were caught up in a revolution there. He was a planter. So my mother said, we can't stand all the noise and the, the shooting, and God knows what. He said, well, I'll take you to paradise, and paradise was New Guinea. My gosh. Well, The Private War of Lucinda Smith is the miniseries, and certainly there's an all-star cast in front of the cameras, but some very talented people behind the scenes as well. Oh, indeed, indeed. Well, Pete Yeldon, for a start, he's, he's one of Australia's top top writers. He he did, uh, you know, Captain Cook and, and, a, and a whole list of wonderful, wonderful things on television. Also plays. He's, he's a great playwright. Bill, we, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was in Los Angeles, and my panel operator, Brendan Roberts, was there as well, and he was scurrying around record stores trying to find a copy of a musical that you did many years ago in England. Brendan, meet Bill Kerr. Hello, Mr Kerr. How are you? Hello there, Brandon. What was the musical you were, you were hunting for in Los Angeles? Cole. Oh, 
that, that's right, in coal. We did that in 1974. We, 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 we went into the Mermaid Theatre for eight weeks and we stayed for a year. And you, um, you did a great job of brush up your Shakespeare and It's Still Lovely. Wonderful cast. Good Lord, you, did you see the show? No, I didn't, but I first heard that album about 11, 12 years ago and uh, been trying to get a copy ever since. And a person I was staying with in New York had a copy and he uh, did a recording for me, so I'm enjoying it again. Oh, well, listen, uh, uh, <laughs> I might give you a ring when I get to Melbourne and get you to, to give me a copy of it. Certainly. It's wonderful. That's terrific. Bill, how do you look upon those years of your great success in England, both in radio and television? I mean, you were almost a forerunner to many Australians who have since gone over and have been quite successful. You uh, really did uh, blaze the trail, didn't you? Well, I was, I was lucky because I, I got away early in the piece, straight after the war, you know, like a, a lot of Australians. Joy Nichols, who, who the listeners probably will remember and take it from here, Dick Bentley, Kitty Blewett, we all went over early in the piece, and I, I got away with my, with my variety act, as I had in those days. Uh, and then I later went into Hancock's Half Hour, which was quite a, quite a famous, uh, famous uh, hallmark of its day in, in, in radio comedy, written by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson. And, the, and the, they had a marvellous cast, Kenneth Williams, Sid James, Tony Hancock, of course, starring. And um, uh, uh, alas, they're all dead now, that, that whole cast. And I'm the only one that's left alive of the Hancock team. Mm. Quite remarkable times. I keep saying my prayers and being a good boy. <laughs> You're doing something right, Bill, because the performances you churn out are always first class. Oh, uh, that's very, very kind of you. Look, I'm, I, my mother and father were both, both Victorians. They were born in Carlton in Drummond Street, and uh, all my, my relatives are there. Can I send a little message in case any of them are listening? Please do. Well, look, I've got a sister named Alma who is living in Melbourne, and my cousin Eileen at Middle Brighton, Eileen Kerr, and dear Jack and Val Diamond, who I was in the army with Jack, and, uh, and Nat Imbizi, uh, and any dear old chums that are, that, are, that are around in Melbourne, I'll be passing through on in, in mid-June, so I'll be, I'll be looking them up and we'll have a, have a cup of tea. That would be wonderful, Bill, and if perchance there is a possibility, we'd love to have you live in our studio to talk to you. Oh, how lovely. I feel a sudden urge to sing The kind of ditty that invokes the spring So control your desire to curse While I crucify the verse <laughs> This verse you started seems to me The tin antithesis of melody So spare me please the pain And just skip the darn thing and sing the <clears throat> me, 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 Ray, 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 Do, So, Me, Do, La, Si. Take it away. The night is young, the skies are clear, and if you want to go walking, dear, it's delightful, it's delicious, it's the lovely. Understand the reason why you're sentimental, cause so am I. It's delightful, it's delicious, it's lovely. You can tell at a glance what a swell night this is for romance. You can hear dear Mother Nature murmuring low. Let yourself go. So oh, please be sweet. My chickadee, and when I kiss you, just say to me, It's delightful, it's delicious, it's delirious, it's delectable, it's dilemma, it's the limit, it's deluxe, it's the lovely. Time marches on, and soon it's plain. You've won my heart, and I've lost my brain. It's delightful, it's delicious, it's the lovely. Life seems so sweet But we decide It's in the bag to get unified It's delightful It's delicious It's lovely See the crowd in that church See the proud parson plopped on his perch Hear the sweet beat of that organ Sealing our doom Here goes the groom Boom! How they cheer And how they smile as we go galloping down the aisle It's divine, dear 
It's the vein dear. It's the vine. It's the vine. It's the vine. We settled down as man and wife to solve the riddle called married life. It's the life. Oh, it's delicious. It's the lovely. We're on a crest. We have no care. We're just a couple of honey bears. <laughs> Appalling. He's appealing. He's a polymog. He's a paragon. He's a panic. He's a Popeye. He's a pimp. He's the lovely. Girls today in society go for classical poetry. So to win their hearts, you must quote with ease, Aeschylus and Euripides. One must know Homer and believe me, Bo. Sophocles also saf ho ho. Unless you know Shelley and Keats and Pope. Dippers will call you a dope But the poet of them all Who will start and simply raven Is the poet people call The bard of Stratford on Avon Brush up your Shakespeare Start quoting him now Brush of your Shakespeare and the women you will wow. Just declaim a few lines from Othello and they'll think you're a hell of a fella. Yeah. If your blonde won't respond when you flatter her, tell her what Tony told Cleopatra. If she fights when her clothes you are mussy, what a close much you do about nothing. Rush up your Shakespeare and the wall come down. With the wife of the British ambassador, try a crack out of Troilus and Cressida. If she then wants an all to herself night, let her rest every 11th or 12th night. If she says your behavior is heinous, Kick her right in the Coriolanus! Brush up your Shakespeare And they'll all come down If you can't be a ham and do Hamlet Then they won't give a damn on a Damlet Just recite an occasional sonnet And your lap will have honey upon it When your baby is pleading for pleasure let us sample your measure for measure. Brush up the Shakespeare, and they'll all cow town. Better mention the merchant of Venice. With her sweet kind of flesh, you would menace. If her virtue at first she defends, well, just remind her that old wealth that ends well. And if still she won't give you a bonus. You know what Venus got from a donut? Brush up your Shakespeare and they'll all count down. Brush up your Shakespeare. Start walking him now. Brush up your Shakespeare and the women you will wow. So tonight just recite to your matey. Kiss me, Kate. Kiss me, Kate. Kiss me, Katie. Brush up your Shakespeare and the.